Well, good day to you, Internet. Today we're going to be playing some Ace of Spades and talking about what I believe is is kind of a unique subject in terms of uh, in terms of YouTube videos. Um, I'm playing Capture the Flag mode today in Ace of Spades, and if you haven't played Ace of Spades, it's basically like a slimmed down Minecraft artwork game with guns. So it's pretty much the best thing ever for just picking up and playing. You don't really have to lend too much concentration to it. You can just kind of mosey around and shoot stuff, especially when you're playing this capture the flag mode because there's only one gun, this rifle that we're using and pretty simple rules. Go get the flag, bring it back. But you can also construct stuff, so like usually we'll make our little bases and such and uh, try and infiltrate the enemy base and create a little shelter and just pop our heads up and just plink away at the bad guys who manage to get themselves caught in our crosshairs. My name's Prol. I'm from the Devil's Bench, and today I'm going to talk about land parties. As I've mentioned previously, I wanted to create a couple videos on what it means to actually host a LAN party. Now, I started hosting LAN parties when I was a teenager. And at that time, hosting a LAN party was having a bunch of buddies over and getting them to plug into my parents' router, splitting up the internet connection, and just gaming. And just gaming and gaming and gaming. Now, um... Since I'm a little bit older, I have some money to buy some equipment, I can actually focus some of my efforts on providing a network that's conducive to larger LAN parties. And as I've said before, the whole idea here is that if I can, if I can at least get a handle on the elements of a LAN party on a smaller scale, I should be able to translate um, those experiences to a larger scale. Um, the scope will change, but the problems should remain the same. So, ideally, I'm hoping to host public LAN parties within this year, and it should be a lot of fun. Um, I've learned quite a bit in the process, and I'm hoping to share a little bit of that so that if people are looking to even just host little LAN parties. Hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes and you won't have some of the same frustrations. So, today's talk slash let's play slash podcast thing while you watch me play video games is on the basics of organizing the technical side of your LAN party to be. So the first thing I wanted to chat about is this philosophy that my dad actually has. Um, uh, he doesn't really necessarily have a name for it or anything, but he, he likes to tell me about this idea that he has about one wire. The basic idea of it is kind of like this. So if you know how to run one wire to one computer, I think we're getting shot at here. If you know how to run one wire to one computer and get that computer online, you can do that over and over and over again because you already know how to do it once. So all you really need to know how to do is to connect one computer through the entire network, get it all hooked up and get it out and online. Once you do that, you can just do it over and over and over again. Now, there's tools that make that job a heck of a lot easier but the basic ideal is the same. And so, oh, smoke that guy. The idea is this. If I can host a smaller LAN party, I can host a bigger LAN party. I can go as big as I want to because I already know what I'm doing on a smaller scale. The problems become larger problems, but the scope of those problems should be roughly the same. So it, it kind of applies not only when you're running wire and fixing computers and getting computers online, but 
I'm going to apply that same strategy, the same philosophy into running a LAN party. The next thing that I do, um, even if I'm going to have a very, very small LAN party, so like I'm literally going to have two friends over to play some video games. In an effort to save myself some trouble later, what I like to do is to graph out the assets that I have on my network. What I mean by that is I'll create a flow chart, uh, much like you'll see in many home lab diagrams or uh, just straight networking and making diagrams of live networks or charting out how you'd like to plan a network is from the top down, I'll have you know a little cloud that represents the internet and then it comes into my modem, into my routers. The routers feed out this, that, and the other information to servers and switches and clients. I like to put it all out on paper so that I can see where everything's going. And in the case that something breaks down, um, especially in the middle of a LAN party, I don't necessarily need to lend that much um, that many thought processes to figuring out where in that chain it's broken down. Now, I know all the network gurus out there are saying, well, it should be relatively easy to figure out, but why not have some tools at hand that help you in the case of something breaking down? So in terms of organizing your tech, I like to flow chart out what assets I have and what jobs those assets are performing. And we're just gonna try and Plink away at those pixels over there that I think is a blue guy before we keep talking about this. The next thing that I do after I have everything flow charted, because I already know what I have, is I like to stress test things. So I like to get as many connections as I can in and out of each device. If that means I have to liven up one of my servers online and get the guys to test it out before the actual LAN party itself, I'll do that. If I wanna see how network shares are gonna to react to a number of computers, I mean, I, I already have a very good understanding of how I'm gonna be able to share out things on the network and how that should all react. But if I wanted to save myself, again, a little bit of heartache come game day, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of the services you're running are running for multiple clients. So if you're running three game servers, file sharing, and team speak, you want to run all of that stuff all at the same time and make sure that people can connect and use those services all at the same time. The last big thing that I do in regards to specifically organizing the technical side of, of a LAN party again, regardless of the, of the size of the actual LAN party itself, is I like to create a couple plan Bs or backup plans. So I like to create a couple backup plans for failures on multiple levels. I like to have an idea of what's going to happen if one of my networking devices fails. I like to have an idea of what's going to happen if one of my VMs goes down or if one of my server's power supply dies. Obviously, it's going to be very difficult to plan for every single type of failure. I mean, unless, again, you're running one of the larger LAN events and you have a number of sponsors and maybe investors or maybe just you have a cash flow that can prevent these types of things so you just have a spare of everything. That's certainly one way to go about it. What I like to do is I like to make sure that I have a backup plan for the core elements of my LAN party. So if I'm running a VM with a game server, I like to have a backup of that VM and a worst case scenario. Maybe I could run a VM inside of Windows on one of my other servers to host that VM if something happened to my ESXi server. If for some reason my router goes down, I have an old router kicking around in my basement that I can use as like a just in case the router goes down, 
worst case scenario, I could plug in this old piece of junk and we would have um, a DHCP server. We would have DNS. We would have access out to the internet. I like to make sure that if I'm going to host files or I'm going to run a file server of any kind, I have at least two file servers up. One that's ready to go and I can light it up at any time and one that's working as the production server. That's just me. I just like to have both of them on hand and I'm getting planked at by some blocks and some pixels. I just like to have stuff lined up in the case that something goes down. I have as little downtime as possible because you got to look at it this way. A land party in some ways is like a big conversation. It's a big board game. It's a big game. And if you remove the ability for players to talk to each other or to game or you you remove the reason that people are there, it either gets boring or frustrating really quickly. I mean, it's simple. It just you're trying to prevent downtime. And I think if you approach your step 1 to getting a land party going by means of trying to scale down your your downtime. These guys are going to take the... Oh my god, what just happened? I fell into the catacombs of Ace of Spades. If you just try to restrict downtime, everybody will be happier. The ideal is that you have 100% uptime for as long as the land party is going on. And in most cases, that shouldn't be too hard to accomplish because we're not talking about a land party that lasts a year or 10 years or, you know, however you're going to measure uptime in business. We're talking about pretty much six or seven hours. So it should be relatively easy to put the fail safes in place to maintain 100% uptime. I suppose the second part to that is finding ways to monitor your your uptime and having a plan in place not only for the devices and software going down but what are you actually going to do so yeah we have a router and so if your brand spanking new microtech router goes down and you have to switch it over what does that process actually look like um in some cases oh we got some spawn cameras here oh get those pixels in some cases, it's going to be more difficult to actually plan the structure of how you're going to switch stuff over and get stuff live again. Because in most cases, land parties are very small, and it's going to be up to the sysadmin of that land party, the one guy who's hosting it, to get it all up again in the case that it goes down. If you have resources at your disposal like friends who are even remotely interested in IT, you could at least have a plan to delegate a task as simple as, hey, can you unplug this while I do that? It's ideal because if those people are participating in the LAN party as well, they're just going to want everything up again. So basically, your step one is to organize your technical. Approach it from the standpoint that it's one wire, it's one computer. All we gotta do is get one computer online, connected to TeamSpeak, and playing games. If you can do that once, you can do it over and over and over again. Lay out your stuff on a spreadsheet or a flowchart and make sure you've identified all the critical assets. It just helps you to be organized and it helps you to know what you have so if something goes down, you know where to look. And the last big one is create a plan B. Have backups in place, have backup plans in place, and have an idea of how you're going to execute that stuff. It's one thing entirely to have three or four routers, but if they're not set up, and when you plug it in, you have to configure the whole thing and get it going, and maybe, God knows, you got to test it before you can, either, you can even tell people to plug it back into the switch and reboot your computers, do whatever you need to do to get back online. Just have a backup, make sure it's tested. In round two, we're gonna talk about the actual structure of the LAN party day. 
and some ideas that I have and some, some processes that I go through to actually plan out the day of a LAN party, both technically and interpersonally. So check back in for episode two. My name's Prol from The Devil's Bench, and next time I'm actually going to try to kill some blue guys. Thanks for listening.